Driving with these headlights on is honestly like driving a brand new car. Now I really understand firsthand why high quality headlights cost as much as they do. What is going on you guys? Welcome back to Drive Hub. And today we're installing the most high performance headlights available for sale for the C5 Corvette. Sharp Light Innovations by Xenon ACA projector headlights. Now, if you own a C5 Corvette, then you probably know just how trash the factory headlights are. I've said it a thousand times already. They're about as bright as I was in middle school. Not very bright at all. And so far on my journey with the C5 Corvette, I've tried out a few different headlight options because I, well, care about seeing at night, especially in a low slung, high performance car like this. And I hope I have been able to convey to you guys the different headlight options available at different price points. My first headlight modification to the C5 Corvette was installing Corvette Mods HID low beam bulbs. And really, I have no complaints. They were bright and all, they just really scattered the light around and there was no real concentrated beam pattern, which is actually very dangerous for oncoming cars because they can't see. Fire! And just as much as you need to see, they also need to see as well. Next, I installed LEDs in the car. I even did a comparison video with one HID bulb in the car and one LED bulb in the car. And I'll include that video right up here. And that was kind of a toss up on which headlight was better. They both threw around a similar light, but the HID, in my opinion, scattered the light a little bit more, which was not a very good thing. The LED seemed to have a bit more of a concentrated beam pattern, but on the other hand, the LEDs were around $150 as compared to the HIDs, which were around 60. So again, on the low end of the budget, you have HIDs or some probably cheaper and worse LEDs. In the middle, you have a higher end LED, and then we get to these. And right, just as the old saying goes, you get what you pay for. So if you're a person that really cares about how much they can see at night when they're driving, then you're probably not gonna haggle with those cheaper low-end either HID or LED bulbs. Again, sure, you could find a middle of the road quality headlight bulb, but when you put it in the factory housing, it's just not gonna perform that great. It'll perform good. As I said, I had no real complaints about any of the lights that I've used. But then again, I never was able to drive with these in the car. So on the top of the spectrum, you have these. Sharplight Innovations by Xenon ACA projector headlights. Now these ones are around $650. So I'll include a link to these down in the description below so you can check them out. And right now with this whole pandemic going on, you can use the coupon code COVIDACA to get these for a hundred bucks off. And I'll put that coupon code down in the description box. These are the absolute top of the line, most high performance, powerful headlight system that you can put in the C5 Corvette that still retains the factory pop-up headlights. The Bi-Xenon projector produces both high beams and low beam patterns by using a small 12 volt current to move the cutoff shield. This allows for an instant high beam with a wider pattern and no additional current draw over the normal setup. Now this kit does include 55 watt HIDs that create more than three times the luminosity of the factory halogen bulbs. And because the projector housing is specifically designed for the bulb, you can see further in the dark when you're driving. Now, some of you are probably already saying, well, you said you had HIDs in the car before and you're kind of trash talking them now. No, there's a big difference between an HID bulb in a housing that's not meant for that HID bulb and an HID bulb in a housing specifically built for it. Just wait till you see the difference of these by Xenon ACA headlights compared to the HID bulbs I had in the stock housing. You guys are gonna be blown away with the results. Now I have heard that this job can take a little bit of time because it's not just swapping out bulbs like I've done in the past. So definitely you wanna make sure that you block off a little bit of time to get this done and get it done properly. But in the end, we'll be able to get these installed. And I actually don't think there are many YouTube videos out there on how to install these. I think I'm a YouTube first for installing Sharp Light Innovations by Xenon ACA headlights. So let's make history and get these in. All right guys, so the tools required for this job are Phillips head screwdriver, T15 Torx, T20 Torx, eight millimeter open-ended wrench, 10 millimeter socket, half inch socket, socket extension, and of course your ratchet. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go into the cockpit, flip the headlights up, and then turn them back one click so that they shut off, but the headlight buckets stay up. And while we're in here, we're gonna pop the hood. 
And now we're gonna remove both terminals from the battery. Now we're gonna remove the one Phillips head on the outside of this headlight bucket and two on the inside. And we're gonna have to close the hood to get the second one, that's my bad. There's the second one. These are tiny screws, be sure not to lose them. Now we're gonna pop the hood again. We remove this headlight bucket. There's a clip right here in the middle. Just have to kind of shimmy out. Then kind of roll it forward. And it'll come out like so. Now we're gonna take our T15 Torx and remove the four Torx bolts that are holding on this headlight cover. There's one on the outside here, one on this side, and two on the back side. Right there, and right there. Now I am gonna need a shorter screwdriver to do this because this is in the way. Now we can go ahead and remove this headlight cover. Now we're gonna remove this T20 Torx and eight millimeter bolt that make up the headlight hinge. There's one on this side and one on this side. Now these do have Loctite on them from the factory. So I'm gonna spray both of them with WD to loosen them up. Now they've soaked for a minute, we can try to pull them off. Oh, Handy little tool right there, magnet. All right, so I had to go grab my other T20 because the regular screwdriver was not working for this. And these are on here pretty snug, so. There's one out, and now I gotta remove this one. So now that the bolt is removed, you gotta get these out somehow. It looks like this one you just unthread. Now be careful because there is a bushing. It's right there. Looks like it's staying in, it's pressed in. Right there, not sure if you can see it. So we got one of those. Looks like the bushing is trying to come with this one, it pops out. All right, so the bushing's in place there, it's in place there. Make sure you don't lose those. Now we can go ahead and rotate the whole assembly forward. Now we can go ahead and remove the bulbs. Now a little tip here, make sure you label the high beams and the low beams. The harness itself coming from the Corvette, not the LEDs obviously, because those are coming out anyways. So I'm just gonna rest these up here. This I know is the high beam. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some tape around this. Now we need to go down here and remove this 10 millimeter nut right here that holds the arm to the motor. All right, so now this is out of the way. Took a little bit of wrestling, but I did have to put the headlight up like this and that's where it decided to come out. Now we can go ahead and remove our old bulbs. Make sure you have these labeled before you disconnect them. Now the old bulbs are out of the way. And also another little helpful hint. I know I'm just so helpful. Now is a great time to switch to either LED fog lights or replace your fog lights or your daytime running lights. I have Sharplight Innovations LED fog lights as well as their switchback corner marker lights. That's honestly one of my favorite mods and it completely transformed the front end look of my C5 Corvette. So highly recommend going that route. And if you're gonna do it, might as well do it all at once. This is the easiest way to access all that. All right, so now we have to remove the three 10 millimeter nuts that are holding the headlight housing on. You see these two circles right there? That's where you're gonna use the extension. Remove those two. Then on the other side, you have one right there. Now, while this piece is out of the car completely, it's a good time to lube up the horizontal and vertical headlight adjustment screws because they seize up over time and then eventually they'll break on you. So right now we're just gonna take some WD or you can use PB Blaster, whatever you have, and lube up the adjustment screws. Just a little precaution to do while this is all out of the car. Your other screw is right down here, this little small one right here. Lube them up and spin them around and make sure they're free and working. And if they aren't, add a little bit more lubricant and add a little more force. That's what she said. Damn it, I'm a, such a child. Okay, so now we're gonna take the driver's side headlight housing. 
I'm gonna leave the plastic on it for as long as I can so I can protect this lens. These are an expensive part and I wanna keep them in tip top shape. So the way that I'm telling driver side, take the lens that we took off, match them up. You can see that these two are the same. And on the back here, on this bulb, there's a retaining pin. All we have to do is move it over just like that. Easy, it just spring loaded, it pops out. So now with our retaining pin out of the way, you can remove the nice cover from the HID bulb. That's really, really nice. Now we're gonna insert the bulb in the housing. Okay, I don't know if I was supposed to do that, but I removed the whole thing entirely. Put these back in their positions. Okay, just like that. So now the bulb is securely in place. You can see the retaining clip is over both sides of the HID bulb mounting point. These are back in their positions and the bulb is secure. Just double check, make sure it's in there. Nice and secure, no wiggling around. Now we're gonna secure the mounting bracket to the housing in the same position that it came off. Go something like that. Go ahead and get this one started up here. Move over to the other side. Line those up down there. Okay, now these are all snugged up. Don't tighten them too much or you will crack the housing. Be very careful. Don't use a drill or something on these. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and mount the HID ballast in this area. Now, Sharp Light Innovations does include some 3M double-sided adhesive tape, so I'm going to put it on the back of this and mount it in there. But first, I'm gonna take a cleaning agent and just clean up where I'm gonna stick this adhesive to because this ballast is metal. Look at that, it's even got Sharp Light Innovations engraved in that, that's awesome. But this is metal and it does have a little bit of weight to it, so I don't want it going anywhere and I sure as hell don't want it falling off and just bouncing around in the car. That area is plastic, so I'm just gonna use some plastic prep like you'd use for painting and clean this little area right here. Perfect, nice and clean. Make sure that dries. We can take our ballast and we're just gonna mount it down here out of the way like so. There, now that's nice and secure. Okay, so now we're taking our factory low beam connector tan and black wires right here and plugging it directly into the ballast. Now on the connector coming off the ballast, there is a plus and a negative sign. You're gonna line up the black wire coming out of the factory connector with the negative sign. If you plug this in incorrectly, the lights won't work. So you're gonna take the negative sign, take the black wire, line them up and plug them in like so. So now we're gonna take the headlight housing, still trying to preserve this plastic so I don't scratch the lens while I'm installing it. But now we're just gonna bolt up this arm to the 10 millimeter nut that we had right there. It does have like an oval fitting as you'll see, so you just need to line it up for it to actually go in correctly. Get that on there and snug it up. So now we're gonna take the factory Corvette high beam harness and plug it into this harness, this connector coming out of the Sharp Light Innovations light. That snaps in like so. Now we're gonna take this other harness that's hiding up here. We're gonna take this harness with the light blue on it and plug it into the location that was the high beam. Go ahead and plug that one in, make sure it's all secure. So now you can see quickly how this is set up. Lastly, we have to take these two remaining wires that are hanging down and plug them into this. That one plugs into that one. This one obviously plugs in to this one. Make sure all your connections are nice and snug in here. All right, so I got the pivot arm that I really couldn't show you guys. It was really, really tight. Then I secured these two back on. But right now I'm gonna plug back in the battery and then we're gonna test these and make sure they work.
All right, guys, well, damn. It did take a little while to get this one in and situated. The main problem I had was that little pivot arm that makes the door go up and down. Uh, I could not get that thing back on. I had to wrestle with it for a little bit. Now, you will notice that when I turned on the high beams, the low beam is supposed to stay on, but that's because I haven't connected the other side harness yet that allows it to do that. So that's completely normal and that's all right if yours does it. But man, is it worth all the time getting these things in because they look phenomenal. These things look so cool. I was almost afraid that they were gonna look a little too futuristic on the front of the C5, but they almost look like they could be there from the factory. These things are so cool looking. I can't wait to see what they look like at night. But now I'm gonna go ahead, tighten up all my hardware, make sure it's all secure, put back on the headlight housing roof thing, get the headlight shroud back on, and then this side will be complete and we'll move over to the other side. <laughs> With this passenger side, it's the same exact procedure to tear everything down. There is gonna be an extra step involved when we get to the wiring, but we'll focus on that when we get to it. But for now, we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did to the other side. We're gonna remove this headlight shroud. We're gonna remove the top of the headlight bucket, get the whole headlight out of there, put the new headlight on the old bracket. But for now, let's get this torn apart. A few moments later. All right, guys, so on the passenger side here, you do have a wiring difference than the driver's side. You do have this relay harness that has to be plugged in just on the passenger side, not on the driver's side. So now all we need to do is take the low beam Corvette light harness, the one with the tan and the black wires, and plug it into this end of the harness coming out of the relay harness from Sharp Light Innovations. Remember black wires on the left here, black wires on the left here. Make sure you've got your polarity correct or else the lights will not work. Now this other end with the yellow, I don't know what this is, plugs into the harness coming off of the ballast, the Sharp Light Innovations ballast. So go ahead and plug those two together. Make sure it clicks and is secure. All right guys, so the last bit of this install is putting in this high four harness. Now this allows for the low beams to stay on when the high beams come on and it's essential for the bi-xenons to work properly. Open up the fuse box. This little spinny thing right here, pop the fuse panel cover off. So we have to tap into a few fuses in here. I'll include a link down in the description to a diagram that shows you which ones you have to tap into. We need this 10 right here. Then we just take this harness, the high four harness, and we just slide the leg of the fuse. Through like this, I believe. The fuse just slides in through that. And then we can put it back in. We need this one right here. This is for the yellow wire. Now we need to put the black end of this harness, the ground. I believe that's the ground right there. We're gonna hook that up to that quick. And then the positive end, the red wire with the fuse on it, that's gonna go right on that one. Now you are gonna need a half inch deep socket to get onto this battery post right here. I put the fuse box cover back on, threaded that screw in. I've tested both sets of headlights to make sure that they're working. I put on the high beams too to make sure that the low beams stayed on during it, and they did. So now it's time to just tighten down this hardware, make sure everything's nice and snug, put back on the headlight covers and the headlight bucket shrouds, and button up this project. <music>
so now that these things are finally buttoned up, yes, it did take a little bit longer than I expected. Now on the passenger side, as I showed you, you do have to do that little bit of wiring, but it's very, very easy with the fuse taps. What I didn't do on the passenger side was unbolt that 10 millimeter bolt or eight millimeter bolt that allowed the entire headlight housing to come out. I actually just pivoted it forward, removed the three bolts holding the old lens on, and then put on the new one. Now that did save quite a bit of time. And as far as I'm concerned, everything's working perfectly as it should. So, but from those driving shots, man, oh man, can you see a difference with these things? Now I'm honestly the last person to spend a lot of money on a set of headlights. For me, light was light. In fact, in my Jeep Wrangler, I had generic Amazon brand headlights when there were companies that were selling six, $700 headlights. Now I really understand firsthand why high quality headlights cost as much as they do. These things look incredible. You can see such a difference in the beam pattern, the cutoff, the displacement of the light. It really is incredible. These are so many more times better than the factory headlights and way, way better than just throwing an HID or an LED bulb into the factory headlight housing. The proof is in the pudding. Just look at the cutoff, look at the quality. Driving with these headlights on is honestly like driving a brand new car. A massive shout out to George from Sharplight Innovations for hooking me up with these Bi-Xenon ACA projector headlights. These things are absolutely fantastic, guys. If you're interested in hooking up your C5 Corvette with a pair, click the link down in the description below. You really will thank me for it. Be sure to check out Sharplight Innovations. Tell them Jake from Drive Hub sent you. These completely transform the driving experience of the C5 Corvette. They make it 10 times better and they really update the platform. These are so much safer to use. You're gonna be able to see more of the road and fellow drivers on the road coming at you. They're also gonna be able to see the road and not just be blinded by your HIDs in the factory housings. I know I've said it before, sure, the HIDs looked good in here, they spread a lot of light, blah, 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 same with the LEDs, but there's a difference between a lot of light and high quality light in the right places that you need while you're driving. I'm completely blown away by these guys. I've never really used a high quality, a really, really high quality projector housing light like this, but man, oh man, driving down the road, with these things on, it really is spectacular. Guys, I am the last person to say, oh yeah, spend a lot of money on headlights, you know, nothing on the market right now for C5 Corvettes match the quality and the beam pattern and the cutoff and the clarity that is these Bi-Xenon ACA headlamps. And honestly, if it weren't for installing these things and really seeing how well they work, I would have never spent a chunk of money on headlights. So stay tuned for more content with the C5 Corvette, but I'll catch you guys in the next video. Happy motoring.